Hi, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, we're going to tackle a topic that often trips up candidates preparing for cybersecurity certification exams – DNS attacks. I'm going to talk about the purpose and use of the domain name system, and then with that knowledge under our belts, we're going to explore some common attacks against DNS. Now, you might know already that computers use IP addresses to communicate over the network. But those addresses are very difficult for people to remember. And just imagine if you had to memorize the IP address of every web server that you needed to access. The domain name system, or DNS, allows us to use easily recognizable names in place of IP addresses. DNS servers translate the names that you're more familiar with, such as www.certmike.com, into the IP addresses that computers use to communicate, such as 54.174.107.98. Now, every time you connect to a network, that network provides your computer with the IP address of a local DNS server that it can use to look up IP addresses. Then, whenever you type in the domain name of a website into your browser, your computer sends a request to the local DNS server asking it for the IP address associated with that name. If the server knows the answer to your question, it simply responds to the request with the IP address, and then your web browser can go ahead and connect to the website using that IP address. Now, if the local DNS server doesn't know the answer to your question, it contacts other DNS servers to determine the correct answer, and then it responds to you. And DNS is a hierarchical system, and organizations who own domain names designate the DNS servers that are the authoritative sources of information about their domain name. When a local DNS server needs to perform a lookup, it asks a series of questions that eventually lead it to the definitive answer from the DNS server that's responsible for that domain. Now that's how DNS works in a normal situation when it's being used legitimately. Unfortunately, there are several ways that attackers can exploit DNS to undermine our security. Before I explain some common DNS attacks, I just want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. Those plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my other cybersecurity videos as they come out. All right, let's now dive into a few DNS attacks that you should be familiar with when you take a cybersecurity certification exam. The first of these is DNS poisoning. Now remember, DNS is a hierarchical system, and it involves a series of servers that perform lookups. DNS poisoning attacks compromise one of those servers and use it to provide users with false DNS results. By inserting incorrect DNS records at any point along the way, the attacker can then redirect traffic to the attacker's system. Now, the attacker's system might contain a web server that's built to closely resemble the system that that unsuspecting victim expects to visit. When the victim logs on to the attacker's system, the attacker is then able to capture their login information. Well-executed DNS poisoning attacks will pass the credentials through to the real system and then can capture all traffic between the victim and the real system, preventing the victim from noticing the man-in-the-middle attack. The next DNS-related attack we're going to take a look at is typo squatting. Typo squatting depends upon people making simple typing mistakes. Now, it's very cheap to register a domain name. It's sometimes five bucks or less. Attackers who engage in typo squatting just register hundreds of typo variations of official sites. Then, when people incorrectly guess or mistype domain names, they wind up visiting the attacker's site instead of the real site. Let's take a look at a real-world example of typo squatting. You're familiar with the Google search engine that users can access by entering the URL google.com in their web browser. But did you know that if you mistype Google and write goggle.com instead, that's also a registered domain? When you visit that site, it just displays advertisements with no other content. This is obviously a typo squatting site that attracts visitors who mistype Google and then earns money off of the advertisements shown to those users. 
Now, in domain hijacking attacks, the attacker actually takes over a domain registration from the true owner without their permission. They can accomplish this by using social engineering techniques on the domain registrar, conducting a pretexting attack where they pretend to be the authorized owner, or they might do it by stealing the access credentials of an authorized domain administrator. Now, DNS attacks are a topic that can be a little confusing when you're preparing for a cybersecurity exam. I hope that this video helped you understand them a little bit better. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity content.